Hi, hello chess lovers, and welcome back to Chess Amatorin. In this video, I will show you a very interesting chess game played between Koch Berthold and Heinz Nawara. This game took place on July 1938. All right, let's dive straight into the game. The game begins with e4, e6, d4, and pawn d5, challenging the pawn. The pawn declines the offer and advances to e5. However, another offer is made with c5. Nawara still avoids capturing the pawn, but protects it with pawn c3. Let's continue with knight c6, increasing pressure on the pawn. The response is the same, developing the knight to f3 for protection. Nawara starts aggressively by bringing the queen to b6. At this point, it seems relatively harmless. Berthold also brings the bishop to d3, preparing for short castling. Continuing, the bishop goes to d7, preparing to activate the rook. However, Berthold immediately captures the pawn on c5. At least this move weakens black's defense if they choose long castling later. Yet, Nawara has an opportunity to recapture and double attacking pawn f2. Okay, now Berthold short castles automatically. It's worth noting that a common mistake played by black is moving the knight from g to e7, aiming for short castling in the next move, because with pawn b4, the bishop will be trapped. Therefore, pawn f6 becomes Nawara's choice, challenging the pawn. Once again, Berthold ignores the offer and opts to play with pawn b4, counterattacking the bishop. All right, the bishop retreats to e7, and Berthold again guards the pawn with bishop f4. Nawara still captures the pawn, and after the knight recaptures, now the exchange of knights takes place, and the bishop clearly recaptures. Finally, Nawara can prepare for short castling with knight f6. White doesn't want to fall behind and brings the knight to d2. Short castling is now inevitable. The knight continues to rise to f3, Nawara challenges the pawn with a5. This time, Berthold is willing to capture the pawn, and after it's recaptured with the rook, Berthold activates his rook to b1, attacking the queen and the pawn behind it. After the queen goes to a7, protecting the pawn and counter-pressuring twice, it's evident that both players are playing aggressively. This is confirmed as Berthold immediately moves the knight to g5, indicating an intention to capture the knight and target the weak h7 pawn. Nawara protects with g6 first, continuing with a somewhat unique move, rook b2. Do you know the purpose of this move? Yes, the rook attempts to trap black into capturing the pawn on a2. Nawara promptly takes the bait and captures the pawn with the rook. What happens next? The bishop retreats to d4, threatening the queen. It seems Nawara is aware of the trap and plays pawn b6 to divert the bishop's attention. Now it's time to activate the well-planned trap by Berthold. The bishop captures the pawn on g6, sacrificing itself. Why would the bishop risk being sacrificed? Let's delve into the analysis, okay? If the pawn dares to capture the bishop, the continuation is queen to c2 or b1, threatening the pawn and the rook twice. Now you see the trap I mentioned earlier. Perhaps knight to e4, protecting the pawn, is the best move, but the rook will still capture the rook and threaten the queen. Or, if this threat is ignored, consider rook takes rook. Then, queen takes pawn is a check, forcing the king to h8. Queen h7 delivers checkmate. It's a brilliant trap. The knight is pinned to the bishop, allowing the queen to execute checkmate. Now, let's get back to the game. We've seen that if the bishop is captured by the pawn, Nawara chooses the second option, capturing the rook. Pay close attention. This will be an interesting show for us to watch and enjoy together. The queen goes straight to h5, as we already know that if the bishop is captured, checkmate will occur, as analyzed earlier. And if left unchecked, the queen or bishop will capture the pawn on h7, delivering check. 
Nawara responds well by sacrificing the pawn on e5, attacking the bishop and opening a path for the bishop. Will this have an impact? Yes, Berthold still captures the pawn. Did you know that to protect black from checkmate, they have to sacrifice both bishops? For example, bishop to f5, the bishop captures, and then bishop to c5 protects the pawn with the queen. But clearly, this would be a self-inflicted torment for black. Instead, Nawara chooses rook takes f2, a daring move, or you could call it speculation. Why? Because if the rook takes the rook, the queen can go to a1, delivering a check. The rook blocks, followed by bishop c5 check. The situation immediately turns in favor of black, who is now on the verge of winning. However, as I mentioned, this is a speculative move where at least two possibilities can unfold. Berthold doesn't want to capture the rook, but opts to sacrifice the queen, delivering a check. Well, if this isn't speculation, it's a forced move. The knight must capture the queen, leading to bishop taking the knight, checkmate. This is a very brutal checkmate. How could it not be? The black position is no joke. Just capturing the rook results in checkmate. Both players are playing openly and aggressively. It makes sense in such games where numerous combinations can occur, and ultimately, the one who achieves checkmate the fastest is the winner. Well, and there you have it, friends. That's all for this video. I hope it entertains and proves useful. If there are any mistakes, I apologize, and thank you.